Welcome to the Awakened Human Podcast, the place to be for highly progressive yet extremely grounded intuitive guidance, energetic support, metaphysical tools, and higher consciousness for highly successful, ambitious, soul-centered visionaries and leaders like you who want to make a global impact and achieve your highest fulfillment by aligning with your soul's true divine agenda and your role in God's plan of lighted creation, and by utilizing your divine gifts, talents, and abilities from the higher realms. We do this by working with the non-physical realms of higher guidance, energy, intuition, and powerful metaphysical tools for healing and transformation. We understand that the real change and transformation that's being called for on planet Earth and in our own lives and our own businesses doesn't come from outside of us, but rather from within. And that the change that we desire to experience in our lives and in our world requires us to change from the inside. I'm your host, Lori Ann Spagna. I'm a best-selling author, spiritual catalyst, intuitive, energy worker, ascension guide, multidimensional channel, animal communicator, visionary, light worker, and luminary. I have dedicated my entire professional life to helping thousands and thousands of humans and animals all over the world in service and contribution to the light, which is the expansion, the upliftment, the evolution of humanity, to awaken, to uplift, and to align with our true divine source, which exists within each and every one of us. It is my passion, joy, and purpose to share this information, energy, and consciousness with you. Thank you so much for being here today and for sharing time with me. Let's get started. Okay, blessings. Blessings and welcome back, everybody. Thank you for being here on The Awakened, Elevated Human. It's great to be back with you here again. We are entering uh, part three of a three-part series on shadow work and trauma healing. I hope this has been enlightening to you. I realize a lot of what I'm offering, especially in the second episode of the three-part series, is very leveled and layered, right? And I'm using hypothetical examples to try to help you to understand because we don't always realize those unconscious patterns and ways of operating that are not allowing us to be our magnificent selves or are that are interfering with us really experiencing our highest achievement, our highest potential, and the most fulfilling, rewarding aspects of why we came here. And we also, especially for those of you who are amazingly successful in your careers, amazingly brilliant at what you do, incredible visionaries, light leaders, and many of you who are already on stages performing and doing fabulous work with incredible other high-powered, brilliant, magnificent light workers, light leaders, visionaries, those of you who are already and have been for many years breaking through glass ceilings and reaching new heights, you guys are already doing this. Like this isn't unheard of to you, right? So that's why I was going so deep in those last two episodes, especially the part two, because I think that you get this. I don't think that this is so far beyond you. I get it. If you're a person who's brand new to this kind of work, it may be too far out there, maybe too deep. It may be too complicated. But for those of you who are really, you know, my tribe is people who are into this, like we're doing this work. We've been doing this work to some degree or another. We're not afraid of taking responsibility for our own selves. We're not typically blocking ourselves on purpose. We're doing our best to do this kind of work. So that's why I felt that I could go deeper with you guys. And I hope that that makes sense, right? Because we don't always realize, like, I want to say a couple of things, and this is on the tail end of our last call. So If you haven't listened to part one and part two, please do. But when we're talking about shadow work and trauma healing, we just don't really always understand all the ways it affects us. For example, I had finished off last week about talking a little bit about podcasts and being on stage. And one of my mentors who I absolutely love, a business mentor of mine, oftentimes, and we'll keep this person genderless and nameless, 
just out of respect and honor. But there's oftentimes when this person is on a podcast or teaching or speaking, sometimes, oftentimes, this person has a cough in their throat or throat issues, right? And it interferes with this person's podcast sometimes. It interferes sometimes with this person's teaching. And this person knows it. And they don't necessarily associate it with the trauma, although they might. They don't necessarily realize because they're not, you know, they're more in the 3D world, the physical world. Even though this person is a spiritual person, it's more of a religious. It's not necessarily a person who's as much into energy work or who might look outside of the mainstream. They don't necessarily realize that that's a stuck or st stuck trauma and that that stuck trauma can be resolved. And they're not necessarily as brilliant as this person is. They're not necessarily realizing, wow, what would it be? Even though this is the kind of thing they teach, <laughs> it has even taught me. They're not necessarily realizing how much better life could be without that stuck, blocked energy in the throat because their perspective in the physical world is that they've got some issue that's not healable or that they've done as much as they can because they're mostly working in that old paradigm. They're not seeing it as a trauma. They're seeing it as a physical issue that can't be resolved when that cough drops and cough syrup or whatever else they've done, I don't even know, hasn't worked. So, but it's an ongoing issue that has been with that person for many years, right? It's not recognized even in someone of that stature who's relatively famous and pretty progressed in that person's own journey, that that's a stuck trauma that would free and liberate themselves, free and liberate them up so much by potentially resolving it, right? So we just don't always realize these things because we walk around with them on earth and we just don't always recognize the ways that these kinds of unconscious shadow aspects of ourselves can be resolved. And even though society is starting to become more aware of this and we're starting to mindset shifting is a great example. Some of the tools that people are starting to use, hypnosis is something that's starting to be more recognized, affirmations, of course various forms of meditation, various forms of, oh, EFT is one that people use, a tapping technique, which brilliant technique, very good, but can also only go so far, can really only tap out to as much as this, your energy field is way more than this, right? It just, how long will the ripple effect of a tap go through your, your energy field is the size of a 55 story building. Only think of it in circumference, like an orb. Your unique energy field is the size of a building. Maybe as large, although I've been told not this quite this large, but like as the Empire State Building. Think of it like that, only an orb. That's your energy field as an individual. And certain levels and layers of a collective. I can talk about this when I get into multidimensional stuff. But at those levels and layers, your consciousness is still there way beyond this. Now, that might be too far out there, but you've got stuck and trapped energy that is part of the shadow in these levels and layers. So tapping alone can only go so far, but that's a good tool. There's you know rapid eye movement that's being done. There's all kinds of practices. We'll talk about that a little bit more, but I want to talk about some of the other kinds of energy that can be stored and stuck as traumas that can be resolved when you're doing this kind of work. So what we didn't really address is, first of all, we address like the ancestral clearing, ancestral lineages, descendants. We address a little teeny bit DNA. I uh, linked into the story of DNA and the, told you to go back and listen to the episode on DNA and get the free gift. If you haven't gotten that already, go get that at lauriespagna.com forward slash free gifts forward slash DNA. I might have even forgot to say it in the last episode, but make sure you get that. We talked about that, but what we didn't talk so much about is your energy field of where a lot of these unconscious patterns exist. 
a lot of people tend to think that it's just somewhere stored in your unconscious brain. That's only a small fraction of it, right? There are parts of the brain, the amygdala, the amygdalae, because they're actually two parts of the brain, and the hippocampus tend to store up fear, and that can be cleared out. We do that in my classes, in my sacred visionary mentorship, in my live events. But you also have trapped energy. I mean, Western medicine isn't even recognizing chakras, but they are starting to recognize energy centers, right? So this is a chakra center. I mean, it's an energy center. This whole area, right? Now we might call it the third eye, but it's like this is all where the high, the brain functioning is going on. This is an energy center, right? So you have seven major chakras in your physical body, and then you have a lot more chakras. At least 108 to 144. I was pausing to listen because I wanted to double check. At least 108 to 144 chakra centers, which are energy centers. These are the major energy centers of the body, right? Throat, heart, solar plexus region, which is your belly center reproductive and tailbone, right? Tailbone, buttocks, base of the spine. That's your first chakra, reproductive center. Your second chakra, solar plexus, belly center, third chakra, heart chakra, fourth chakra, throat center is your fifth chakra, brain, sixth chakra, and this, and then crown, right? These, like for science, Western medicine, I should be more specific, to not acknowledge, they might not use the word chakra, but they would never not acknowledge that there is an energy center that is so important and relevant here. Your eyesight, your brain functions, your higher reasoning, your hearing, all your smell, like this is all your third eye, which they don't call it that, but that is an energy center. Now there's blocks in there, right? If you think you're not clairvoyant, if you're not using your clairvoyance, your clairaudience, your claircognizance, you can't smell or taste beyond like the physical taste sensations of food. That's blocked area. Brain fog, problem seeing, not 2020 perfect vision, like all of that. That's all that is. Those blockages, if you can't see far distance, that can all be healed and resolved. Everybody has these. And by the way, this I covered in the some of the earlier episodes on your Claire, there's an episode in the past about your psychic abilities. So I would suggest go back and listen if you haven't heard that one, right? If you've got issues here, teeth issues, tongue, mouth issues of any kind, thyroid issues, neck issues, neck problems, stiffness in the neck, those are physical pains, but what if you have trouble perceiving someone else's point of view? What if you have a relationship issue and you're struggling in a relationship with a teacher, a coach, a mentor, a student, a client, a partner, romantic interest, a love interest, a sibling, a parent? If you can't see their point of view, if you can't somehow allow yourself to understand how their perspective, you could have problems in relationships. That's largely connected to these two chakras, not only, but partly, largely. These energy centers allow that. Stiff neck, maybe you're too tunnel visioned. Poor eyesight, these are going to block your extrasensory abilities and they're going to limit you in how you can work with clients, students, and others. Even in potentially having the best romantic relationship. Okay, heart center, right? These are unconscious parts of us that we need to resolve, right? If the heart center is not fully opened and activated energetically, we could block ourselves not only from love, but from joy. If that center is not really fully opened and activated, you could experience incredible success. You could have great wealth but you might not really be happy or fulfilled, deeply fulfilled. So you can definitely open that chakra, but when it's not really opened, it'll store blockages to your own joy, your own happiness, 
and it'll interfere with your fulfillment. It'll interfere if it's not fully opened with your ability to truly process a lot of the experiences that you're having and to receive the higher awareness about how they're meant to help you to become more loving, more kind, to experience more of that in return, whether it's in business or in life. Same thing with the belly center. Most people aren't fully awake and aware about their own belly center. This solar plexus region is this chakra center is full of debris, which is why people feel all kinds of dis disempowerment, disempowered in their relationships, in their business, in their career, in various areas. That clearing that out is shadow work. Energy is the only thing, energy work really is the only thing that can really effectively do that. So that whole area is areas where we have struggles with confidence, courage, you know, personal empowerment, potential, personal potential. And if you're a person who has in any way been challenged by any form of power struggle dynamics, those energies where you've ever struggled with someone, maybe if you're an entrepreneur, you've had contract struggles or any kind of light leader. If you're in the whole warrior energy, which a lot of light leaders are, they, that's issues. They have not resolved that is energy debris. If you're playing with the game of the inner warrior, which is an archetypical pattern it's serving you in some way, which is why you're playing with it. It's not wrong or bad, but it's not the highest and best expression, likely. Sorry about that if it doesn't land too perfectly. But really, you're not meant to be a warrior with anyone or anything, right? That's a power struggle dynamic that's unresolved, and it's linked energy blockage in that area. I hope this is making sense, right? This is why we call this deep dives. These are the deep dives. And that really should have probably been the topic of the third part three, because this is the deep diving. Well, we did get into that in part two. But really understanding how everything's connected and linked within you and how the trauma healing and the shadow work helps resolve these things. Because when we clear this stuff out, we're no longer having to play with that kind of experience Reproductive center energies are all about balance. And if you don't have balance in your life, especially, oh my goodness, so many of my fellow heart-centered entrepreneurs and solopreneurs and light leaders who are working quite hard, right? Overworking, overstressing, maybe you've got slave-slave driver programming going on there. That's an unconscious pattern. Working, 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 never having time off. There's always more to do overwhelm, overwhelm, overwhelm. That is second and third chakra blockages. Not an, not only unconscious mind. This cannot be just repatterned by saying, I will not overwork. I will not be a slave or slave drive. Like that can't be changed in the mind. Those energetic patterns are in our field. And a lot of that debris is stored, This that specific debris is stored in either second chakra, which is the balance of masculine and feminine energy, the balance of all things, the balance of relationship, including your relationship to yourself and your life, how you spend your time. Most people don't know this stuff, right? So that energetic will play out. You'll be overwhelmed. You'll never feel like you're getting anything done. You'll never feel like you can accomplish it all. I played with that for a long time in my business. It's excruciatingly painful to feel like you can never get everything done. There's never enough time in the day. Why is that linked there? It's your personal power center and it's your balance of feminine masculine energy and balance in relationship to self, to the world, to time, to your source, to your life, to everything. So when those issues are resolved, you're not going to have that as an issue in your life. But the energy will keep playing out in an unconscious way until it's healed and resolved. It's a trauma. Requires shadow work. Let me go into the base and root chakra a little bit. To the base and the root chakra, many people don't realize it stores up your life plan. 
So for those of you amazing people who know you've got something fabulous to offer, you know you've got something fantastic, but you can't necessarily pinpoint it or put your finger on it. That's because the base and root chakra is probably blocked. Partially, at least that's partial of the reason. Just recently, I did a live event at, over at Unity Church, or one of the churches where I've frequented and it was amazing. It was so fabulous. We did group healing. We did work for the whole, we did selfless service work with energy for the whole planet. I love doing live events. I did them in service, right? I don't charge anything for them. It's local. And I get to do light work and I get to do what I love and offer it in community. We had a room full of people doing amazing work. So incredible. So fabulous. If you're ever in the geographical area where I am, please come to those when I have them or else come on a retreat. We do that stuff on the retreat. We also, on all my retreats, we also do that stuff in the Sacred Visionary Mentorship, which is an online program. So we're working with energy and one of the women afterwards came up and she's like, so she was so blown away. Actually, she came to me the next two days later, we ran into each other. It wasn't after, afterwards she said, thank you. But two days later, she was talking to me and she was like, I know I have such an important mission. I'm such a powerhouse. I know I have so much to offer. I just don't know what it is. <laughs> it talked for a little while. It didn't take her long for it to be revealed. But I just did like a little tweaking on her root chakra to clear it out right while she's standing there. Sometimes when someone's really ready, it can be awakened. Your root chakra holds that stuff your mission, your purpose, your reason for being here, your life plan, how you're going to survive on this planet, not just survive, thrive. A block chakra will cause all kinds of survival issues. How am I going to survive? How am I going to pay the bills? How am I going to get by? Fear will block it. All right? So this is part of trauma healing. And we're walking around with this stuff and we're not realizing you have problems in relationships. That's a second chakra a lot of times, right? If you're overdoing, overworking, at, living out of balance, that's a second and third chakra issue. In addition to all those other things, and these are just within the physical body, right? Our traumas are not just stored in the DNA, though they are. They're not just stored in the unconscious mind, even though they are. They're not just stored in parts of the brain, even though they are. They're not just stored in our chakra centers, even though they are. They're stored in the multidimensional layers of who we are. I will address that on another episode. That said, I want you to start to recognize that these traumas can be healed and resolved and you can be free of them. And when you free yourself up, you are literally able to remove those energetics that were keeping you stuck or trapped so that you really can be the expression of the divine and the, the divine reveal itself through you. Your magnificence will be astounding to you, astonishing to you, amazing to you, incredible to you astounded and amazed you will be because the light and the consciousness and the energy of the infinite all that is will illuminate illuminate your magnificence and then what comes through you you will be like what was that it was so fabulous i can't even believe my own self and in so doing you will be uplifting not only your audience, your community, the people around you, the animals around you, but you will have an effect on the whole of humanity. Your gifts, talents, and abilities will grow exponentially beyond measure. Your capacity will grow. Your capacity to offer so much greatness in the world will grow. Your knowledge of how to offer that into the world will grow. You will start to learn how to provide to yourself any teachings that you need so that you can do the work that you're meant to do. And it won't be, it's just through working with energy because that's what energy does. When you make space and clear out some old energy that's keeping you small, stuck, or limited, something greater, the illumination of you starts to come through. So you can make that impact you're here to make. So you can be your magnificence. I hope this is making sense. And yes, there are lots of tools. We mentioned some of them. My work is through energy. To my knowledge, and I did lots of years of tapping. 
I did all kinds of things, pressure points, massages, and all kinds of things, tween out, like all kinds of things. But what I've learned is there is nothing better than allowing source to do it with you, in you, through you, and for you. And that energy is an energy of allowing and being. It's the easiest, fastest way to do it. It is the most pleasurable and enjoyable way to do it. It's so good. And I have done tons of practices, breath work, meditation, plant medicine, although I haven't done much of that. It's not really my calling or my jam, but there's so much out there, but I will tell you, I've done most of it. Reiki, I'm a Reiki master, Theta healing. I did that for years. That's like nothing, nothing compared to the stuff we get into alignment with our source and we will and allow and let it do. It's just so easy, so good, so powerful, so effective. I hope that you will experience it with me. Okay. I hope I haven't gone too far off tangent again. This is the third in a three-part series of really healing the shadow, doing shadow work, doing healing trauma so we can really truly be our most magnificent best self. And I hope that this has helped to bring to light why it's so important and how some of this plays out in our lives and where a lot of the stuck energy is and the effects it has on us. It's barely scratching the surface, but it's a good intro to it. And for those of you who understand it, hopefully it gets you even deeper because we do the deep dive work. This is not just on the mental plane. When I do a session, a podcast on the multidimensional reality, I am sure that that will add more and help more for you as well, add more depth to this. So please be on the lookout for that in a future episode. There's so much to cover. <laughs> so with that, I'm going to sign off for now, but I want to say, please keep me posted. Let me know. What do you want to hear about in the podcast? What do you want me to share about, teach about? And please join me in Facebook and on YouTube and let me know. Give me feedback because I love, love, love to cover more of what you're interested in hearing about and learning about. And of course, I want to hear how this is helping you because I understand shadow work and trauma healing. It's thought to be something we have to do for something like a, a real like how humans recognize a trauma to be like a car accident or a murder or a rape or a death. And those things are real. And we definitely can do that. And we know that mainstream therapy really isn't getting to the depth of it, but neither is mindset shifting. Neither is just basic affirmations. Neither is just basic visualization and meditation. It just doesn't go deep enough. Neither is enough to do it just by manifesting. I love manifesting. That's not enough. Breath work isn't enough. It'll help, but it's not enough. Tapping, it'll help, but it's not enough. These are some of the practices we've been using. You can get an astrology reading. That's great, but that's not going to clear trauma. You can get a numerology reading or a name reading. I do that. I do that for all of my students in the sacred mentorship, but that's not going to clear it. We got to go deep. This is the deep dive work on multiple levels and layers of trauma healing. It is... It's how we clear, heal, resolve, free, and liberate ourselves. And this is how we make lasting legacy for the future generations. This is how we make global impact. And this is how we liberate ourselves and allow the true magnificence and brilliance of who we are to come through. It is through this deep dive, trauma healing, shadow work, that really can only be done with the purest frequency of source energy. Real permanent transformation here. Okay. So this is the end of part three. I hope this has been helpful. Keep me posted. Let me know how this lands for you. And if you have more questions and I can address those in future episodes. I'm going to sign off for now. Go out there and be your magnificent self. Go out there and be your most brilliant self. Go out there and be the light leader, visionary, light worker, way shower that you truly are, that you were meant to be. And if you need support and assistance in your healing journey, please 
let me know. That's what we're here for too. All right. I'm sending you so much love. I'm wishing you your most benevolent best. Until next time, farewell for now. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for listening today. If you loved the show and if you benefited in any way, if it helped you to up-level or expand your consciousness, if you gained any new insights or ideas, if it made you think or become more aware, or if there were some strategies or intuition that you may have benefited from in any way, would you please do me two easy and simple favors? First, if you would be willing to leave a review, it would mean the world to me. I'd be so grateful. And second, if you're willing to share this show with anyone else who would benefit, you can either post it on your social media or just email it to someone and share it with another person or any other people. It would be so awesome. This kind of thing is so helpful in expanding consciousness on the planet and helping others to benefit from this kind of teaching, which just simply isn't generally readily available in the mainstream. So sharing it really helps others benefit and helps our planet evolve and awaken. Plus, expressing gratitude and generosity in this way will also expand your capacity to give and receive even more. Either way, I just want to say thank you so much for being here and for participating and for sharing and overall just for being the magnificent, the spectacular, the brilliant, the fabulous, the wonderful you that you truly are and for allowing yourself to be the very best version of you today and every day. All my love and gratitude to you.